The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our home page and check out for more videos. Thank you. The word of God is powerful. It is sharper than double XOR. Now it's able to divide the soul from the spirit. It penetrates the bones even to the marrows. Now it arrests the intense intent of people. So when you come face to face with the word of God, open up because the word of God can work on your body, soul and spirit. Now we have been discussing bitterness. We have defined bitterness as seed of resentment in the heart of man. So bitterness is seed of resentment in a human being's heart. Now, so from today, I'll be looking at the segment of it and I'll be talking about bearing grudge. Bearing grudge. Now, when we talk about grudge that you bear grudge we mean you are holding on to a hurt or anger towards another because of an actual or perceived wrong so you are holding on to hurt or anger towards another because of a perceived or actual wrong. And he said, At that point, we say you are bitter. Or you are resentful. Or you have a feeling, you have an ill feeling towards someone. When you let go of the head or you refuse to hold on to it, that is what we call forgiveness. So to forgive is to let go of the head or anger towards another. When you hold on to the head, we say you are bearing a grudge. When you let it go, you are forgiven. Now the Bible says that God instructed Moses is right through Moses in Leviticus 19 verse 18. This instruction is about what to do instead of having a grudge against someone. Now Leviticus 1918. Yeah, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And Tore na inya unko fo emma hu mina se po na do yonko se wonho mini eurade. Now when you don't forgive and you hold on to an offense and keep it steadily in your mind then you are graduating from just bearing a grudge to nursing the grudge so when you 
e kwa kwa ko du ba bi a afi de wonya nipa no ho na se po anache se yawde no o tete no ogugusu nsuo in fact you are graduating dangerous na che se be bia wo ko no ehu ehu ye pa to nursing the grudge of the feeling of displeasure se wonya sa de ewe no na che se yawde anade anya ode no e na ogugusu nsuo ma na nyini so when we talk about nursing grudges se ye ka se wo yen is to keep steadily in your mind or in your memory of bitterness. Not just a yaudina nipana ye wono the bi wajunim. Keeping steadily in your mind or memory a persistent feeling of ill will. Nipan we yawa wedino de biara o jinehu. A persistent feeling of it will and the be an who ya wa wedding no the be a wo dwene ho koto so dwene ho sai wo resulting from a past offense now when no be be no nipa no bo ni bi a wa ya wa etwa mu ntira wo let me take that one again ma me hwe we be o when we say you are nursing a grudge so ye ka se ya odi anase me na se pa wa nya wo bi ho no ogugusu nsu a wo ye no so you can take this slide off and let them pay attention to me no so listen to me. When we say you are nursing a grudge, is to keep steadily in your mind or in your memory a persistent feeling of ill will towards another. Resulting from a past offense like insult or disrespect once you come to that state you then you are nursing a grudge for some they will do that for the rest of their life you see, when you bear a grudge, when you are nursing a grudge, or you have an ill feeling towards someone, sometimes you may, you may even want the person to die. And such people, they don't die early. Hey, but so if you don't take care, you carry it for the rest of your life. What are signs that you are holding on to a grudge? Now I'll talk about six of them. Now the first one, you still feel that anguish, that pain within you. You still feel bitter number two it is easy for you to get irritated with that person yeah i like the tree rendering you feel you are easily irritated by that fellow when you think about that person number three your feelings are negative. Now your mood changes. And the change is negative. And sometimes you feel that this person, I want the fellow to die. That is why I'm saying that when you graduate from just bearing grudge to nursing a grudge, You'll be doing that. You'll be entering into dangerous zone. Because you wish people like that get mad. Other times you want them sad. Sometimes you want them disgraced. You see, bitterness always wants revenge number four you avoid the person you, you avoid the person number five you still seek fairness and want people to see your side of the story 
So they keep talking. And explaining their points. And spreading malicious information about someone. Number six. Are we together? Ah. Anytime that you are reading the Bible, read your heart as well. Now read it as well. So there should always be two books open. The book of your heart. And the word of God. And you, uh, it might be the same way when you are listening to the word of God, listening to it, and then pay attention to your heart as well. Sometimes when you go to church and people are preaching, young men will stand up and do this. Be they are shouting. No, see. They have, they have not opened the book of their hearts. Don't be picking these things in the church. You need to be very serious when the word of God is coming to you. Because it's not for that person, it is for you. So read the two books. The book of your heart than the word of God. So as you are listening to me, read your heart as well. Number six. When everything about the perceived offender does not please you. Anything about the perceived offender that displeases you, then you are bearing a grudge or nursing a grudge against such people. So now let's pay attention to the dangers of nursing grudges. Now we have said that bitterness is the malady of the heart. And we have defined it as seed, seed. And pay attention to seed. I'll be dwelling on the seed. Seed of resentment lodging in the heart. So we want to begin looking at the dangers of nursing the seed. Of resentment. Now, what is seed? What is seed? Seed is the gem or a propagative source of anything. Now, if you just pay attention to the slide. Seed is the gem or propagative source of anything, whether of plant or the seeds of discord. Now, when we say gem, we mean something that serves as a source. Or initial stage for subsequent development. So when we say you have a gem, it means that something has entered your system and it has the potential for subsequent development. So we are always counseled to be careful of gems. Because gem can be seed. Seed is also a propagative source of anything. Now, whether of plants or of the seed of discord, like bitterness. So we are talking about 
But please pay attention. And so, it is wonderful the way seeds grow. Little by little, yet steadily. And quietly. They grow. Now, when you go to farm and then you, you visit maybe your maize farm and you see the plants beautifully and you are glad it's raining. How many of you, while standing in the farm, see the plants growing? Wow, to say, But now you can stand in the farm for two weeks you will never see the plant lifting itself so it is wonderful the way seeds grow little by little yet steadily and quietly they grow and so na wo komiemu no na onyini ko seeds grow well when they are nurtured now when you nest a seed you are sure that it's going to grow well so when you nest bitterness and grudge you are sure that it is going to grow well viable seeds have potential to propagate or multiply or Reproduce. Now, whether of plant source or seeds of discords like bitter feeling. Are we together? Now, I would like to throw some more light on the importance of handling seeds. In this instance, the seed of bitterness by considering the mother of all parables, the parable of the sower. I will take Mark chapter 4 in parts. So Mark chapter 4 I'll be taking it in parts Or reading it in parts So I'll start from verse 1 Are you here? Again Jesus began to teach By the lake The, the crowd That gathered around him Was so like that he got into a boat and sat in it out of the lake while all the people were along the shore of the water's edge. Now, if it is here, a church review, a one piano, Nanko Fukunu P, Nesia, no banning chain, empty, or call Kudwunumu Kotinase, a pono any, Nanko Fukunu, no war, and piano, na obetieno, a assassin. Now, he taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching said Now pay attention to verse 3 Listen A, fam a farmer went out to sow his seed Now I said we will be discussing about seed of resentment now verse 4 As he was scattering the seed Some fell along the path And the bears came and ate it up Some fell on rocky places Where it did not have much soil It sprang up quickly Because the soil was shallow but when the sun came up the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root so the principle is that once plants do not have roots 
they can't survive. Other seeds fell away among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. Some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Now verse 9. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When yeah, verse 9. Now can say the Now pay attention to verse. It's under so normal circumstances. When Jesus is discussing with the, the crowd, the disciples will be there. And so they also follow the discourse and the discussion. But in this instance, verse 10 says that when he was alone, that is Jesus, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parable. Now, verse 13. So let's jump to verse 13. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? That is why for me, this is the mother of all parables. If you don't understand this one, you will not understand any parable. Now, Jesus said one say, Munimbei. What was this parable talking about? Now the next verse. The farmer sows the word. Now, the word of God is, is, is paramount. So far as Christianity is concerned. Now when you don't hold on to it, Forget about discipleship. When you are a who here, papa, 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 and no any didn't in mind, I will Christo Suma di Enyinemu Sumuye. Now the big one. The Esumpa. Pay attention to this. Fetiha. The same verse, but my interest is in the second half. As soon as they hear it, the it here is they hear the word of God. Satan comes and take away the word that was sown in them na wonya ti asem no a entem ara satan ba na obeyi asem a waguo no efi wo mu so lift your head afi ma otiso when the seed of the word of life is sown in you se enkwa aba no odua e wo mu a quickly that is what the ESV and the, uh, the other version. Quickly, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown so that it does not take root. So, some say, Obun Sam, or Yen Tem Satan, or Ba Ebe Yi Abano Efumu, na Anya Hine. Yeah, why? I didn't hear. When he allows the word to take root in you, it has potential to grow. And it becomes a weapon in your hands against him. So he will not allow the word to take root so quickly. Takes the word of God from your heart. When we were growing up, we used to have this game called Fatu Honeko. Yes. <laughs> Put it down and go. And leave. Leave, yeah. Now, when you, you decide that you are going to have that kind of fat to with a fellow, anytime that you have food, you have to make sure that the person is not around. I said, you are grown up here and be a crab, you are the two or pet, not just only you know, or to me far at the car, only one seventy. So, when you're doing here, oh, yes, oh, be a sir, a male. When you buy bread, 
Even before you buy the bread, check and make sure that that person is not around. So once you have the bread, the person says, hey, put it down and leave. That is the game. You have to put it down and leave. And the son of Bruno Etienne, to win your baby, to say, Panoa, now we share, say, Nippon, or men, and just a domine. If you swallow it, you cut your stomach open and take it. We now, Minu, to meet your full cry, you call. But, brothers and sisters, I don't want to call it a spiritual game. We go to check the preachers, the word of God. But soon the enemy comes, pick it out from our heart, and we behave as if the preacher man did not say anything to us. Yeah, that is far too unequal. Verse 20. Others like seed, this is now Jesus trying to interpret, like seed sown on good soil. They hear the word. Now the progression is they accept it. They don't reject it as if it is for someone. They don't make unnecessary noise in church as if somebody has a challenge. They hear it. They accept it. And Look at that. Shall we read together? And produce a crop. Now listen. If you look at the force behind it, it, it is telling us that it's not the seed that is producing the crops, but the fellow who has accepted it produce a crop. Produce a crop. That is why you see that the yields are totally different. Some will yield 60, others will yield 100. Because the production of the crop Depends on you. you know what say now Now what Now if it were the good seed of the word. Satan will like to quickly attack it. But when is the an evil seed of resentment? Do you want him to attack it? No. He will leave it for it to nurture and grow and help you to grow it. This time round, it becomes a weapon in his hands against you. Next week we'll be talking about how the devil helps you to nurture the seed. But an, let's pay attention to Hebrews 12 14. That's Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Muni muni nipe njina entem asomjue ne anhutia obi kwetia onhuno erade etirino. And verse fifteen. Do no muni. Now pay attention to this. Afiti hey. See to it. Munche ye. Now you see to it. Oh, and waka se she ye. That no one falls short of the grace of God. Obi and free onyango pon adum no. And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble for you and to defile many. Now, when yet you say in Hini and one union be a in free and yet I'm me yet or how I'm funky can ye I'm make it can you be so see to it in the who can ye that bitterness does not take root in you. If it does, it will cause trouble for you and it will defile many people. We say, yes, sir. A bay or how Eddie Amawanka, sir, Nedin Kekaya, Abekeka, and Fronso. Now, when Esau and Jacob had their challenges, right, Esau and Jacob, we now maintain one. The two of them died, and even I think that the two of them even. Uh, 
they reconciled as brothers but not their descendants one no 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 until a time that israel was being attacked and israel needed a passage through edom through edom and the people said we remember what your grandfather did to our grandfather you can't pass through this they gave them up to their enemies and it will cause trouble for you and defile many see when you are bitter or you bear grudge or you are nursing a grudge against someone please if you are a father don't discuss that when your children are around you can do that with your wife if you, you are interested in it. But if you pass on to your children, it will become a generational problem. When the seed of bitterness is not gotten off quickly, it could have devastating consequences when, when you start nursing it you may never know what will come out of it you may never know you may never know I went to the market many years ago when we were in Kumasi and I saw this thickness a mood was just so different very bad quite negative so I questioned mama oh, why you are not looking sweet this morning now she couldn't respond. Went to me and can be be our wow. But I pressed to know why she was feeling um she wasn't looking, she was looking sullen. Now so me cut us well besides and be a mehunu de entia ne ye bia no ayesa. Then she told me a story. Can, a simbi, a she has some um uh, some grudge with this other dickness. But they are neighbors. And the children will go to each other's house and play. But they know that their mothers are friends. But this child didn't know that somehow um, there is some tension between the parents. So this child went to this Dickness's house. And she went there playing with the child. Then somehow the woman says, I didn't know what happened. I pushed this boy. And the young man, the small boy fell down, and while she was lying down crying, he turned and said, What have I done? What have I done against you? What have I done? And a brabo friend from Esun, Osunya Nobisa, and the end of my own, the end of my own. Of course, he's not done anything against the woman. No question, they said, On your mammy, and that picture kept. Hunting this thickness the whole night. She woke up with that same picture. You see the devil too. <laughs> oh, sorry, when, when you know you do, you, even in prayer, when you lift your hands, then you give you some nice pictures. When someone saw the, yeah, nobody know, yeah, yeah, you know, we're trying to funny, crack, crack. Give you some nice pictures. Oh my, so so when you lift up your hands, lift up your hands. Oh my, when I saw, I was telling you, what kind of thing I'm going to do? Now, wow, pictures. But the funny thing, wow, wow, now on Sunday, I'm going to perform. See, Jesus said the the the. The prince of this world can't. Yes, but see, we in me, to he doesn't have anything. When he has, he will use it against. He is called the accuser of the brethren. So this woman woke up with this feeling. 
nanso nti mami o sori ye no saade no agye na dwene what have i done to you edie na mami maye ti a o what have i edie na maye you have a problem with my my mother what about me woni me mami ko ntoko a na me die me ba mu sai what about me edie na maye i want you to bow down your head for a moment let us see utia se be yesima you are passing down bitterness to children wo di ya odie wo nye no a di amauma be careful it is a dangerous thing that you want to do. God is not interested in that. We need to take bitterness out of our spirits. When they take root in you, the devil will exploit it. Mm. Let's lift our heads, please. Ephesians 4 verse 26 and 27. Ephesians 4 verse 26 and 27. In your anger, do not sin. In your anger, do not sin. So something can hurt you. You'll be angry. Say, let it go. Do not sin. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Go to bed still angry. Chosen me say mubufua munya bone muma wia enkoto mabufuo so the big one 27 shall we read together and do not give the devil a foothold if you try he will take a mile afeni kesi e pa no say mumma obonsam kwan the munnim na mumma no kwan kitu abi obefa ni nyina what does this mean in respect to what we are discussing we need to say when you allow seeds of resentment if you joke with it in your heart you'll be giving the enemy foothold let me bring an old testament story to open up this verse so when the women were return, uh, when the men were returning uh, from conquering Goliath, now the women started singing. Verse eight of First Samuel eighteen says this. Yankee Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but with me only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? Now Saul Obufu can see Nan Semno and Yano de or can say what the Pim do. I'm a David. Now, me dear, a pim and what your mommy now a ding and a canoe bill said a hindu. So he is hurt, and he I didn't know just because of the refrain of this, the, the song the women were singing. Now, and you might what is a man or a twenty verse nine. It was when you moon shall we all read verse nine? Mommy and Kaimum. And from that time on, Saul kept now listening, and from that time on, simply meant that. He never let that bitter feeling. He never let let it go. Just say, say, if we don't have a crown, not just say, Osha, you don't know a banner or the ashenim. If you say don't have a crown, you know, oh yeah, no. He kept a close eye on David. Even this 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 rendering is nice. The other version say we kept a jealous eye. Just say, say, O tu ne ni esan David. Then, best thing. Yet was when you do not see nursing grudges are dangerous. So when you be woman as a poor and I, you do not know what it is in a crack. Shall we read together? Ready, go. The next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul because he has given the enemy foothold. But look at something. He was prophesying in his house. Prophesying, is it from God or from where? Uh, while David was playing the lyre, and he 
as he usually did Saul had a spear in his hands uh, which verse Saul had a spear in his hands and he held it saying to himself I will pin David to the wall but now, David eluded him twice now if you know David the, the in sa rebo in sem ko se de oye no da no na pia kura ni sem na solo to pia no na o se me bo david afam o feso no now look at a song that women some women are singing wa hwe se ma e to wadwumo and look at the resultant effects because of bitterness na hwe ya odi enti de afrimu aba why you want to kill the young man who has brought so much glory to 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 israel Mark 6 verse 19 There is a word that I'm interested in So Herodia Nest a grudge Herodia Against John And wanted To kill him But she was Not able to but people who nest grudge, if they want to kill you and they are not able to, they don't stop. Now Herodia nya no mena se po na opese o kum no aye yohani na unso when to me he ni pa o nya o home mena se po no when to me o kuwa o mani si wow. Now they are very dangerous. Oh we o papa. They are always scheming for a next move of destruction. Doesn't matter the titles they have. And Saul was a king. Saul, no, Herodia was a queen. Herodia, na What about those of us who are not royals? What <laughs> When the devil is at work, he steals, he kills, he destroys. When bitterness is at work, it will steal, it will kill, it will destroy. Doesn't destroy people, it destroys first you yourself. See, pastors who are listening to me, so bitterness it drains anointing. So when people are disturbing you, please, for the sake of your anointing, don't mind them. When you are bitter, your anointing be shaken. Your anointing will drain out. I hope you have received something. Did you say on Sakimbrivi?